In this tutorial, we're going to show you a brief introduction to how to use the Wi-Fi 104 mobile application for smartphones or tablets. Step number one is download the Wi-Fi 104 application through the App Store or the, uh, the Google Play Store. Then go to your settings. If you click on the settings, you want to connect to the Wi-Fi 104 network that is broadcasting. It's broadcasting from the unit inside the control panel. Once you connect to the Wi-Fi 104, I'm already connected, it pulls up, go back out and then open the Wi-Fi 104 template. As you can see, it will pull up. It should be already pre-programmed from your previous from your installer. You're going to click on it and it's going to bring up this menu. Now this menu is the very front menu that you're going to have. Now periodically if this doesn't pull up or it says discontin uh, disconnected and it's not working you might have to dump it and search and click on it two or three times before the first time of use. It does take some time to uh, uh, multiple times before it connects. So you're going to click on it and you've got now this menu. So let's first start out. You've got two strands on the system. RGB1, RGB2. That's the two different strands on your trim light select system. So in order to control one strand, again I'm on RGB1, I can drag my finger to whatever color I want to get to any color of the rainbow up to 16 million colors. The farther down in, in you go, the more white it becomes. Okay. Now, to turn on the next strand, you would just click on RGB2, which is going to bring in the next strand, and you can control that to whatever color you want in any color of 16 million colors. Now, if they're too bright, you can dim them down. You can see that strand has gone dimmer. Go over to this one, and I can down I can dim down the next strand to get to a dimmer color. Bring it back up because we like bright, beautiful lights. So that's the basics of this screen. Now, if you want to dial into certain colors, you can auto automatically use this one, where you can dial into to different colors. And even go to more of a purple. Uh, I'm sorry, an orange. Nice vibrant orange. Now, that is the main points of this main screen. Now, down here, you've got multiple different menus. The device menu takes you back to the main screen that we originally saw. Group menu is not needed in this application nor is scene menu. You do not need those. Now if you want to shut your system off, push off, and they completely go dark. You can turn it back on, you got bright beautiful lights. You can also, if you only want one of the strands going, you can shut them both off and then just click one strand and that one strand is now in operation. To get to a lot of the different versions, go to mode, and this is going to be all of your colors that are pre-programmed in the system. As you can see, this indicator bar shows what color it's producing. Red, green, blue, yellow, purple, uh, basically a, a teal, and white. Now you've got all kinds of different combos. For example here, this is red, green, and blue red, green, and blue. It's going a little fast, so I can slow that down with this bar, which is your speed bar and your brightness bar. So now, as you see, I've slowed this down. It is still circulating through red, green, blue, but much slower. If I want to speed that up, I just drag this back up, and now it's going through quite a bit faster. So all of these are your different pre-programmed colors green and blue. 
red and blue, red, green, and blue, and then number 12 is the main seven colors that are pre-programmed. Now, if any of these you want to have flash or change colors, you can click on this, and it brings up a menu of either gradual, jump, strobe, or fade in and dimming. Now, with one color, in order to keep it static and not moving, you want to make sure it's on jump. Jump would indicate that it's not going to be, it's, there's only one color, so it's not going to jump through the colors. If you'd like it to fade, you can do gradual, and it kind of fades in and out. Now, let's show that same feature on a multicolor. So here's red and blue back and forth. It's jumping through the red and, uh, <coughs> red and blue. That shows jump. Now I can touch that and say I want it to gradual. Now it's going to slowly rotate through those two colors, which I'll obviously combine and make pink and purple as it's going through, trying to, to get from blue to red. You can also come over here and say I want it to strobe. That will push it going red and blue back and forth. I can even slow it down. There's blue, red, blue, red. I can also come over here and say I would like that to fade in dim. So now it's kind of kind of instead of jumping through it, it's fading to black before it generates back to the next color. Fades to black and then generates to the next color. So you can do that on even this one where you've got seven colors, it can generate through each one going to, from brightness to darkness back to the next color to darkness back to it. And that's if you just click on this and go to fade and dimming. So now it's going to cycle through those colors slowly. Very simple, very easy to control. Now, other than this, the main thing you want to see is custom. The custom feature is ones that you can adjust and change. For example, here I have one that's kind of a warm white. The warm white is a color that is created by, let's get into it so we can edit that, is 220, 120. So 220 parts red, 100 parts green, 20 parts blue. Okay, That's a warm white color. I've got this pre-programmed into the system. Come over here. This is an orange. Here's orange and purple back and forth for Halloween. Um, you can just you can customize this all you want. So if I want to change this color, so right now this is uh, green and yellow, I can come in here and say I want to edit, and I can choose which color I want to edit. Let's just say I want to have uh, this is kind of a a um, St. Patrick's Day. I want to change the yellow to more of a white. Here's green and green and white now is showing. Now, if I wanted to add another color, I click on the box down here, and then I come up and drag into a color. Now that I want pure red, sometimes these are a little harder on the color palette to get to, so I'm going to go through and change that to give me just red. 255 parts red, zero green, zero blue. And there's your red. So now I've got red, green, and white for Cinco de Mayo. Apply. Now, every time I'm on this one, it's going to go from red, green, and white. I'm going to make that jump so you can see the colors. Red, green, white. And then it's going to continually go back and forth between those colors. Very, very simple. Very, very easy. So on only on the custom are you able to edit these and save these into different versions. Here's one I have for red, blue, and white for Independence Day, where you've got the red, white, and blue cycling through a little fast. I can dim that. I can slow that down a little bit. And you've got red, white, and blue for 4th of July. Coming back in, this is the basic system. Very simple. You can turn on the next one, the next strand, and you can go back in and do the exact same functionality of the red, white, and blue. And now we're in sync with red, white, and blue in the same speed, same everything. 
If I want one slightly off, I'm going to slow one down a minute. And then I'll speed it back up. Now I've got a cycle through of red, white, and blue to be able to stay on the entire time. One last thing is if this is on when power is shut off, for example, utilizing a timer for your system, if this is on and operating and the timer shuts off, shuts the power to the whole system, it will come back on in the exact pattern that it left off before. If you are off when the sh power shuts off because of the timer and turns back on, it'll stay off. So if you are out of town or you're in between holidays and you do not want your trim light on, make sure it's off when your timer turns off or turns back on. Again, standard timer, very easy to purchase at Home Depot or any other hardware store. And that is the basics of the Wi-Fi 104 application. Now, one more thing I'm going to teach you is how to connect your Wi-Fi 104 through your home network so you don't have to go back and forth between the different Wi-Fi settings, whether it's the Wi-Fi 104 SSID or your home network. With this trick, you'll be able to connect them all onto your network so they're always connected. So first things first, you're going to go to the settings. You're going to find your Wi-Fi 104 that's broadcasting and connect into it. I'm now connected. I'm then going to come over to the application, open it up, go to the device screen, and I should be connected. It says connected to Wi-Fi 104 SSID-0. Go to the network button. Here it says connect to existing LAN. If I turn that on, it's going to bring up all the different Wi-Fi signals that are being broadcast within your area. I'm going to go ahead and click on mine, and I'm going to type in my password. Now, I've connected into my password. It's taking a minute to find it. At first, it will sometimes say disconnected. So what we want to do is it did it just connected back in. So we're going to dump this and search again. So once you have successfully connected to your home Wi-Fi, it'll say connected to and your Wi-Fi password. Once that's in, everything should still be set up. Click on it, and you now can adjust all of your, your colors and everything you need, and you're completely tied into your home Wi-Fi network. Now when you go back out, you can still open up and get to any access, any emails, any Facebook, or any social media. And that is how to do it.